Hello and welcome to Chateau Dreams. This is our family's story of moving to the beautiful south of France to a partially renovated chateau during COVID lockdown with all of our animals. Now we're here, we will continue the restoration, we will go and interview people, we will see the sights, have a little bit of French culture and hopefully have some fun with some volunteers. Thanks very much for watching and if you enjoy it, please don't forget to subscribe. of bread this morning and it was necessary to nip into the patisserie to go and get Arthur's breakfast. Um, Arthur, what did you have for breakfast? A nice strawberry tart. The pastry wasn't the same, it was a bit more crunchy. Mmm, and we can see most of it around your face so I think we'd better clean you up before you go into school. school. Hello everybody and welcome to Chateau Dreams. I am in the closest village to the chateau in Sainte Foy and this is the village that Arthur goes to school in. I hope wherever you are you've had the most wonderful week. Here we have suffered with torrential downpour. The rain has really been unbelievable. We've had about five days I think on and off and here in the Lanz region, my goodness you can see the clouds, here in the Lanz region when it rains it really rains. It's a real <laughs> rain, not just a maybe I'll rain, maybe I won't business. Ross and I are really concerned about the roof in the winery or shea on the left hand side of the castle. So let's you and I, and I go and have a look at that in a minute and see what damage has been done. Hopefully none. We heard some big clunks as well in the night because we had quite a lot of wind. So I need to go and have a look and see what's happened there. As you know, we have a huge number of trees in the park. We have two avenues either side of the 600 metre drive, a very old oak and beech and other trees. And when it rains very heavily like this, we're always worried about them coming down um, and doing damage. So let's go and have a look at that. As you know, from one of the other episodes, we now have a wonderful woodcutter or rather crew of woodcutters, that when the weather is better and the ground is firmer, they can get their trucks in, in order to be able to cut down the diseased trees and also thin the trees in order for the ones that are able to stay to get the light and space they need to grow really well. But as I said, we have really dry weather for that to happen. In the meantime, should we take a quick look at saint Foy at the lake? I think it's really beautiful here. It's a very, very old village. Um, they have remains here from at least 600, which is great. And they believe that in the time of Vershinterix, many, many years ago in ancient Gaul, there were Gaulish tribes here. And the Romans were also very heavily in this region as well. So it's quite interesting. But uh, there's just a couple of things I want to show you. And I thought we could have a look at the weir here just to see the volume of water that's come down. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it doesn't rain while I'm here. So please keep your fingers crossed for me as well. Once again, thanks so much for watching us. Uh, your support means a huge amount. Wonderful Mayor has set aside some budget for a lovely meeting house, which is used quite a lot, and a new bread oven. So this means that the whole village can get together for parties organized by the mayor and, uh, you know, we can have a nice get together. It's really lovely. Let me show you this new building. Additional materials. I love the beams here. So this is the bar space and catering space, and this is where we all sit for the parties, which is lovely. They also do performances in here as well. And the local school, so Arthur's school, showed a film here as well that they've made. So it's a really, really lovely space. It's incredibly peaceful, and there's a lovely walk around the outside. You can also fish on this lake as well, actually. And look, here's the bread oven. I don't know whether you remember from an earlier episode, but as I said, we have one in the castle itself, in what we use as the breakfast room. It actually needs to be fixed, but I think this one's really interesting. 
because it gives you an idea of what they actually are meant to look like. So we have the same little door on the front. In fact, I'll show you in a second. There's a lovely sign to say when it was inaugurated. Perhaps more interestingly for us though, if we go around the side, this shows you the actual structure of the bread oven. So inside the one in the breakfast room, this is actually what we have in this basin in the gap. And we have a chimney that goes up, which is actually in very good condition from this. Whereas this one here, if you have a look, the chimney's at the front. So it's slightly different, but the structure is basically the same and the sizing is the same. And here's the chimney on the top. With a handy wood store. Like all French villages, when everybody is at work, it's really quite quiet. The fountain of St Kittery lies here and the weir has, as you can see, been reconstructed. And there was an old mill here as well, which is now gone. But let's have a look. Well, the birds certainly seem to be enjoying it. So there's quite a lot of debris that's been pulled up, but actually it's not anywhere near as much water flow as I thought we might see today. It's obviously doing a very good job. Right, let's go back to the castle and see what's going on there. Hopefully nothing too exciting. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Just starting to think maybe I didn't wear quite the right shoes for this weather. I thought I was being very sensible with the overalls. But anyway, never mind. My toes are slightly wet, so I think a change of footwear is definitely in order. And just in case there's any fishing enthusiasts amongst you, here are the sorts of fish, or rather some of the sorts of fish, that you can catch in this lake. At the moment, it's a catch and release policy. It's rather nice. They have a lot of fishing huts around this lake. Lovely barbecuing space as well that the mayor has put in really trying to encourage a sense of community and families and people getting together. It's a really super community group. Okay, so we better go and check on the castle. Let's see if we can see any damage to the trees. So at the moment, as you can see, this end of the drive we haven't cleared yet. It takes quite a long time, actually, to get through. Look at these puddles. We've got some potholes that need to be filled in, obviously, when the weather improves. That's a yearly task that we do. As you can see, it's a little bit bumpy. Okay. Everybody's looking all right so far. I sort of swept out at speed this morning to take Arthur off to school. He had to get a COVID test. So we took him and Scarlett separately because a number of kids in his class have actually got COVID at the moment. So he's fine, much to his disappointment, I have to say. He quite fancied five days off school, which is what you get in France if you have COVID before you're retested, before you go back to school, school again. Okay, so here's where the tree fell down last time. Everything's looking okay. Everything is looking... Uh, oh, hang on, wait a sec. Uh, right. That side's fine. Um, okay, we're missing a tree. Looks like it's completely... Oh my goodness. Whoa. Okay, okay, okay. Well, the good news is... Well, the bad news is we lost a tree. The good news is it hasn't damaged from the building. So let's just go and... Ha! Okay, so there should be a massive oak tree there. But there isn't. Oh, I probably should have put my wellies on for this, but I'm kind of impatient to find out what's happening. Okay, guys, let's go take a look. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so this, this paddock is the only one that my two sport horses will stay in. They barge their way out of the other ones, which is obviously not ideal. And the reason they stay in this one is because it actually has a metal fence 
all the way around, which is really good. I think it was set up as a stand paddock. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Poor tree. Okay, so it's broken through the fence and oh, cold toes, cold toes. Whoa, look at that. Gone most of the way into the field. Hmm, so he looks like he was quite probably quite diseased. And I think, oh my goodness, look, there's the hole. I think it was probably a combination of the high winds and all the water. Oh yeah, big hole there. Look, because actually if we look at him, we can see quite a lot of him is diseased. It's always sad when a tree falls down, isn't it? Poor old oak tree. It's really sad. Okay, try and find a positive. Lots and lots of firewood. But it is a shame. I think what Ross and I will do is try and find one of the baby oak trees that's growing wild up through the park and plant one of those in to replace it and protect it. And protect it with some fencing so that um, we're regenerating. Oh, that's a real shame, isn't it? Okay, now I'm worried about the roofs. Let's go take a look. So the fence is broken, but it could have been much worse. Oh my goodness, I wonder what they have seen. Battles, weddings, all sorts of things. I think all the others are actually looking fine. Oh, Ross is back from the school run. Oh, uh oh. Oh man. There was a tree just outside. That's that's um, under the green tarpaulins, actually, wood we've got to cut. But there was a tree just outside the stables there that was a peach tree that the cats used to love running up and down. It's probably better for the stable roof that it's fallen down, but it's a bit of a shame. It was very high wind. Here's Sarah and Agnes tending to the bed with the tree in it in the summer. Sip your chai. You got nothing to hide. Yeah, your future's so bright So just smile like there's no one watching Early morning on a Saturday Wake up, it's time to get it started No one's gonna get in your way I am, however, delighted to report that one of my favourite trees in the park, although probably not the most beautiful, this wonderful lime, has indeed survived. It's Dolly Parton's birthday today, the great survivor, and maybe we should call this tree Dolly. Look inside. I really cannot believe it's still alive. Can you see the entire of the trunk is basically hollowed out? Look at that. And I mean, this tree survived those winds and all of that rain and continues to grow. No doubt we'll get some more blossom this year. Well done, Dolly. This is the winery. On the other side, you can see the medieval buttresses and the arrow slits. So now let's go and take a look at the one that I'm really worried about. Remember there was a, a hole there before which we need to have filled, which Serge is coming to do and is creating a quote for us. Again, he obviously can't come in the rain, um, but I'm a bit worried about that one because it was letting sunlight through and the winds are really high. Let's go and see what we can see. As I go in, there's no outward signs of further damage. But it is on three floors. If you're interested in going on a full tour of the winery, there is a chateau tour devoted to it. And if you'd like to see the medieval buttresses, that's on the outside tour of the chateau. Coming up the stairs into the first floor, you can clearly see the water damage. And indeed, there is a hole which is old there from the water ingress. OK, so we're on the top floor now. Oh, no, something that was a very, very small slippage is now... A lot bigger, as you can see from the things on the floor. I really love this space. I love the traditional way it's been done with the cross battening. This is still all original. And the tiles just literally laid on top of each other. 
The tiles aren't pinned down, they're just laid on top of each other like fish scales and this is what causes the problem. You get slippage in high winds and bad weather. The vines on the roof that have been there for many years have also gathered debris and increased the weight on the roof again, causing problems. So what you end up with is extra weight on the roof, you end up with slightly rotten oak beams and slip tiles. So it's a slight recipe for disaster if it goes wrong. Look at the glorious pegs with the oak beams though. Aren't they wonderful? Oh gracious, the hole that Serge is actually preparing a an estimate for from the tiles is huge now. Um, let's just take a look at the ceiling and see what's going on. Oh no, that, that, that is over twice the size. I can't believe it. Can you see? I mean, it's letting some really interesting light in, so I wonder whether some kind of skylight might work quite well in this space. Let's try and look for some positives. Um, obviously, there's a beautiful blue sky as well, but this is a lot greater, the damage here, than, than um, it certainly was. OK, so a rush on that. <laughs> Well, with the rain damage a lot worse than we thought, let's leave looking at the castle bread oven until the first moment of next time and look at some soothing photographs of the summer. Thanks so much for joining us and if you haven't, please don't forget to subscribe and I hope you have an absolutely super few days. Bye bye. <laughs>